U.S. President Barack Obama will be delivering his third State of the Union address to Congress on Tuesday evening in America, on which the President will outline his blueprint for creating an economy built to last. Joining me now to discuss President Obama's political position, as well as the U.S. economy ahead of the President's annual speech, is Dr. Christian Schulz from Bering Bird Bank in London. Christian, thank you for joining me. Now, in terms of his tone and message, what exactly are you expecting from his annual address? With the Republican Party deeply split after the first primaries, President Obama has a good chance of presenting himself as the president of most or even all Americans and be less divisive and position himself more at the center of politics. He will probably take the chance to point to the positive things that have happened in recent months. America has returned to moderate growth, employment is rising, and he will probably take some credit for that and point out that his initiatives have been sufficient to at least create that moderate growth. He will blame all the negative developments on others, for instance, on the Europeans because of the European debt crisis and on the Republicans as far as the effect of the failed negotiations on fiscal austerity are concerned. So he will take the middle ground and say that many things have worked and that he has good plans for the future as well. In terms of goals and aims, many of them he outlined in the previous State of Union speeches still remain unfulfilled and Congress is becoming more and more divided. Delivering speeches to the American nation is usually one of President Obama's strong points, but with a country now divided about his performance and pessimistic about the nation's direction with him leading it, what kind of reaction do you think you'll get from American voters? Well, American voters seem to be about as split as uh, they have been in the last uh, years. So it's unlikely that Obama will make much ground with his speech uh, on the Republican side. But the discussions around the Republican primaries show that at the moment, the Republicans are very much focused on the right and conservative third of the population, and that gives Obama the chance to convince the middle third, the left third he has on his side anyway, so he can focus his efforts on the middle third and position himself as the only credible voting alternative for middle ground voters or swing voters. So in that sense, if he makes uh, some points which are agreeable for middle class and middle ground voters, then he will make progress. Of course, this State of Union speech will act as a framework for his re-election campaign speech and perhaps be his most powerful chance to make a case for a second term. In your opinion, at the moment, what kind of chance do you think he has of survival as president at the moment? Well, a lot of his chances are tied, of course, to the economic performance, as well, of course, to the strengths and weaknesses of the eventual uh, opposing candidate. In terms of economics, the economics is, of course, not spectacular. The growth is still moderate or even modest. Employment figures are getting better, but are still not satisfactory. So from that side, uh, if things go as they have in the past uh, months, then he has a, a fighting chance, but certainly not a home run for him. Um, but one thing that, of course, plays into his cards is the Republican Party's weakness at the moment. None of the candidates seem to be really convincing for middle ground voters, and that opens the way for him to convince not just his uh, his, his own electorate, the, 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 the diehard Democrats, but also large parts of the middle ground, which ca cannot identify themselves with the candidates like Newt Gingrich or even Mitt Romney. Republican candidates are playing on Obama's economic stewardship and, of course, his re-election prospects have always been closely tied to the health of the economy. So, as you suggested, the outcome of the U.S. elections may depend in part on the ability of EU leaders to find a long-term fix for Europe's debt woes. The European debt crisis is, of course, a big risk for economic development in the U.S. It's clear that if the Europeans fail to get the debt crisis under control and we enter a new phase of uncertainty, especially in the financial markets, the transmission to the U.S. economy will be reasonably direct. Of course, the U.S. is on a more stable footing now than it has been last year, 
but the financial markets are always a, a, a very strong transmission channel because American households tend to consume more if financial markets are doing fine and tend to close their purse if there's trouble on the financial markets. So if the Europeans get the crisis under control and a long-term fix would be, of course, the best, but if they just get it under control, that would help Obama's prospects for re-election quite a lot. So, and then, Christian, what about economic recovery? What kind of economic picture are you seeing right now for the U.S. by the end of 2012? Well, the U.S. is still in a phase of deleveraging, so spectacular growth or even normal recovery growth, as we've seen after past recessions, is unlikely to come forward this year. What we're expecting is moderate growth, 1.5% of GDP growth in 2012, possibly a little more if uh, there are some, uh, some positive developments in Europe. But 1.5% is, of course, not enough to create spectacular employment growth. One thing which is key and which helps the American economy in 2012 is that because of it being an election year, no major fiscal cuts are very likely, so that government demand is likely to support the economy, as is domestic private consumption. But on the trade side, it's looking worse because Europe is in a recession at the moment is, and is unlikely to return to significant growth quickly enough for that to make an impact on American trade. Thank you very much, Christian. It was great to get your opinion on the matter. Now stay tuned to Duke's Copy TV for more exclusive interviews like this one. But for now, goodbye.